And now to a developing story on a Connecticut man accused of killing a hotel worker in the Caribbean. Scott Hapgood is charged with manslaughter in the death of Kenny Mitchell, who Hapgood claims attacked him at a resort on the island of Anguilla in front of his two daughters last April. Right now, Connecticut officials are calling on the island to grant safe passage for Hapgood for his November 11th hearing. Let's go ahead and listen in. I'm five children myself. I know that Scott did what any parent would do, any of us here would do, protect his children from a highly intoxicated and crazed man. In fact, an official toxicology report re revealed the fact that the attacker had two times a fatal amount of cocaine, alcohol, marijuana, and other substances in his system. In light of this toxicology report, the official medical pathologist reversed his initial report to attribute his primary cause of death to drug overdose. So we have to ask, why are we here today? Why is Scott being put through this process? The attacker had been charged with rape and arrested a month before the incident. And under the conditions of his bail, he was not allowed to see his children or the mother of his child. It's hard to imagine how any employer especially in the hospitality industry, would allow such an individual to return to the workforce and be around families and especially children. The Hapgood family has been through the unthinkable. I don't think any of us can quite imagine. And I applaud them for making every effort to fully participate in the judicial process in Anguilla. Scott Hapgood is doing this to clear his good name and bring peace and closure to his family. We're here today to stand with and beside the Hapgood family as a community and to ask for transparency, fairness in the ju judicial process and safe passage for Scott as he travels back to Anguilla in a few days. I'd like to now introduce uh, Senator Richard Blumenthal our United States Senator for the State of Connecticut to make some remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, First Select Woman uh, Stevenson. Uh, I'm here today with fellow elected officials and also to represent uh, Jim Himes and Chris Murphy, my colleagues in Congress. I'm here as a United States Senator, but also, as a former prosecutor, having been United States Attorney for Connecticut four and a half years and State Attorney General for some 20 years. But I'm here also as a citizen and as a parent to stand with my fellow citizens on behalf of the Hapgood family. And I want to thank, first of all, Callie and Scott for their courage and perseverance and strength as a family. And I really want to thank uh, the Darianne and Connecticut community for your standing with Scott and Callie and their family. This turnout is really extraordinary. And my thanks on behalf of all of Connecticut to you for your being here today. Thank you very much to everyone who is here. What happened to the Hapgood family in Anguilla is every American's worst nightmare. To be attacked, to be subject to criminal proceedings in a foreign jurisdiction, to be denied return to this country, and then to have the continuing threat of unfair and possibly secret criminal proceedings against them should never happen to any American. We live in the greatest country in the history of the world because we have constitutional guarantees of fairness and transparency in this country. Any American traveling abroad should receive no less and every United States official, whether it's from the Congress or the State Department, should work to guarantee those rights to every American traveling yeah. abroad. Yeah. And let 
me be just absolutely blunt. What brings us here today has nothing to do with politics. It certainly has nothing to do with partisan politics. We stand today, whatever our differences on other issues, behind the Hapgood family. And I'm proud to say that we are united. I have worked over the past year with the State Department. I have written to the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. I've been in touch with the head of our embassy in London, with consulate officials on the ground in Anguilla and throughout the Caribbean, and in consultation with Scott Hapgood's legal team. We're going to continue that work together. We want, very simply, fair and transparent proceedings and safety and security for Scott Hapgood as he goes through those proceedings. And that means that he should be given all the rights that he should have in those proceedings that provide for due process and basic safeguards of fundamental fairness. So I'm going to continue these efforts. Over whatever period of time it takes to assure that the results here are swift, without any undue burden to Scott Hapgood and his family. And there are a couple of very strong signs of threats to those rights. Number one, the proceedings that have been conducted so far behind closed doors, excluding members of his legal team and representatives of the United States State Department. The issues regarding personal security that have been raised by Anguillan officials themselves without providing the strong safeguards that are necessary to assure his safety. The potential for concealing evidence, the toxicology report, which appeared suddenly well after the charges were brought, and the continued confusion surrounding the future of these proceedings. We need to hold accountable the government of the United Kingdom for its territory. The State Department should provide <laughs> the State Department should provide and insist on the government of the United Kingdom exercising its authority over its territory and its judicial system to guarantee these due process rights, basic fairness, transparency a swift conclusion. And I can pledge to you that we are going to be sparing no effort, none, to assure that Scott Hapgood is given those basic rights. Uh, let me now turn the podium over to State Senator Carla Leone. Good morning, everyone. and I first want to thank uh, the community here for such a, a great showing of support for the Hapgood family. Uh, I want to thank First Select Woman Jamie Stevenson and U.S. Senator uh, Richard Blumenthal for their good comments that pretty much have spelled out what we all know to be true, that if you are someone, if you're an American visiting and going on vacation, you want to return home safely. You want to have a, a good trip with your family. You want to come back with stories to share and not the stories that we're now living through the Hapgood family with their unfortunate circumstance where by protecting one's family, which anyone here would do, by protecting one's family to now have to confront a situation that is not of their doing, um, where safe passage is not being granted, where doing the right thing, going back to state your case present the evidence and the facts as has been reported, but then to not to be allowed to come back is something that we just cannot allow. We have to be re remaining together as a community, and by doing so, 
it applies the pressure on Anguilla and the British Parliament to make sure that they stand with us to make sure that the rule of law stands, that the rule of law is followed, and that this family, by protecting their family, is allowed to come home. That is the very least we can do, and it is my honor to be here along uh, with Representative Wood and also on behalf of Senator Duff and Representative uh, Matt Blumenthal, who couldn't be here. We as a delegation, we as a state, along with our federal government, along with the Darien community, we stand together with the Hapgood family. We want to make sure that they come home safely so that they can resume the life that they've chosen to have here in our wonderful community. Thank you. Uh, Senator Murphy and Representative Himes couldn't join us today because they had previous commitments in Washington, but uh, offered the following statement, which I'll read. Uh, Senator Murphy issued the following statement. As Scott Hapgood again prepares to return to Anguilla to respond to the charges against him, local authorities in that country have indicated they cannot guarantee his safety. This is simply unacceptable. The U.S. State, State Department has an obligation to protect American citizens awaiting trial overseas, and I am working with the rest of the Connecticut delegation to make sure that the British government assures that Mr. Hapgood will be protected as he returns to Anguilla for his hearing, receives fair treatment in the legal proceedings as well. Representative Himes issued the following statement. When the tragic incident in April occurred, my office reached out to the appropriate officials to advocate for Mr. Hapgood's safety and to mobilize diplomatic and consular support. As the next phase of the trial approaches in November, I join my fellow elected officials in calling on the government of Anguilla to ensure Mr. Hapgood's safety and that the legal process continues expeditiously, fairly, transparently, and without irregularities. I will continue to work with both Connecticut senators and the State Department to monitor proceedings. Thank you, Adam, and thank you all so much for being here. This is an important day, and it's an important show of passion and emotion and support for the Hapgood family. I'm probably one of the few people that can say I knew Scott when he was four years old. That's when we first met. We were good friends and are good friends with his parents, and I watched Scott grow up. I watched him through middle school, high school, and achieve as an academic student and an athlete on to college and to come back to this community and bring his family back here to grow his family and have the same experience here. By virtue of so many people being here, it's evidence that Scott cares deeply about this community and he's a good person. He's not a man looking for trouble. Trouble came his way and now it's a situation he tragically has to deal with. It has upended his family, but we are all here to support you and I think you know that. As Senator Murphy, Senator Blumenthal had mentioned, and also Senator Leone, it's absolutely imperative that the Hapgood family has safe passage, a fair and transparent process. It's what our democracy is all about, and we should demand nothing less of this situation. So I stand in support and will help in any way possible. And again, thank you all for being here. We're now going to hear a few words from Scott himself. <clears throat> as incredibly difficult as the last six months have been, there are days like this when I'm reminded how much support we have from friends, family, our community, and our elected officials. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal, for your hard work publicly and behind the scenes supporting my family and me during this nightmare. I'd also like to thank Congressman Jim Himes, Senator Chris Murphy, State Representative Terry Wood, State Representative Matt Blumenthal, State Senator Carlo Leone, First Select Woman Jamie Stevenson, State Senate Majority Leader Bob Duff. We'd also like to thank White House Counsel for their attention to this matter. And I'd like to personally thank this wonderful community including our kids, friends, teachers, and schools. 
The support gives my family strength as we deal with this ordeal. We are still in shock that a simple vacation that we looked forward to for so long turned into a nightmare. We all, all we wanted to do was vacation as a family. This nightmare is my new reality. I have not been allowed to return to work where I have worked for over 20 years. I have been disqualified from coaching my kids' sports teams, which gave me a sense of purpose. I go back and forth to Anguilla in the face of significant dangers to make sure that the facts come out because the hard science shows what really happened. My lawyers have made requests, which I repeat here, asking that the Anguillan prosecution takes a fair and balanced review of the facts, which point to the logic that charges against me should be dismissed. I'd like to thank everyone for coming and for your continued support. Thank you. Thank everybody for coming to Darianne today, friends and supporters, especially our media. You play a huge role in helping to share this story and share it often, please. Uh, the courage of the Hapgood family is beyond anything that I can even imagine. So let's keep the message going. Let's ensure that Scott gets a fair and transparent process, that he's guaranteed a safe passage to Anguilla and that this nightmare ends for the Hapgood family as it should very soon. Um, we're, the Hapgoods are not allowed to take any questions with the pending litigation. We might be able to have a few questions answered from his legal team on process, should there be any. But again, thank you very much for being in Darianne today. Today, the President Trump tweeted, I will be looking into the Scott, ha Scott Hapgood case. Um, Mr. Hapgood mentioned the White House Counsel's Office. Uh, your office working with the White House, what have they come up with? Any idea? I, I'm not going to speak for the White House Legal Counsel, Pat Cipollone, uh, and others, I'm sure, are actively engaged. We have been in touch with members of the administration, and I'm not going to go into the details of those conversations, but certainly we have a common cause here, and we're going to pursue it. How do you characterize the White House effort to this point? You know, I, I think we are all focused on the basic goal here, which is simple justice for an American citizen. Swift, sure, transparent, fair process. That's what Scott Hapgood and his family deserve. He was on a vacation with his family, put in jeopardy, and he deserves his day in court. That's our common goal here, and I'm hoping that the State Department will pursue every possible avenue involving the government of the United Kingdom because they must be held accountable. Any other questions? Tony. Can I ask um, Mr. Hapgood's attorney, can you clarify the status of the official cause of death in terms of uh, the view of the Anguillan uh, legal system, how, how they're viewing the official cause of death after the reports regarding a, a toxicology? I mean, I'm, I'm afraid I can't comment on that. It's going to be a short answer. I can't comment on that because it's subject to the proceedings and the evidence that is Well, the first that select woman commented on it. Can you not comment? Other than to confirm that the cause of death has been revised, yes. You know, I think we all, just as you understand, I think we all want to be careful to avoid any sort of prejudicial remarks, and I greatly respect the legal team's reluctance to comment. Hope everyone understands they have a job to do, and they want to avoid any kind of comment here that might be taken the wrong way by the Anguillan 
courts and authorities there because, as with any legal proceeding, their case has to be presented in court, and they've been very, very rigorous about following those guidelines. So uh, I'm not a member of the legal team. I can say they're just doing their job. Happy to step in with a few questions on that. Um, so the hearing that's scheduled for the 11th of November uh, is anticipated to be the conclusion of this uh, preliminary inquest, which is a feature of the process. Uh, it is a process that's held before a magistrate uh, with uh, no one in attendance other than the prosecution and the defense team. Um, at the conclusion of this particular hearing, there will be a decision for the magistrate whether to commit the proceedings to a jury trial. And we don't know when that would be, um, and obviously a host of questions would arise from that. And just so you understand, our concern is, number one, on November 11th, if he is required to return, that the government of Anguilla can offer ironclad assurances as to his safety, given the threats that have been made in the past, and number two, that he will be permitted to return to this country, that bail will not be denied. That point is absolutely critical. In this country, bail is a constitutional right that cannot be denied unless you are a threat to the community, a danger to someone that requires confinement, or a risk of flight. And I just want to emphasize here, uh, Scott Hapgood has gone back to Anguilla and appeared in court every single time that he has been asked to do so. He has flown down there at his own expense, considerable cost, respecting the legal process of Anguilla. There is absolutely no reason that he should, in fact, be required to return for this continuation of the preliminary inquiry or be denied the right of safe passage and return. And that is a real test of the good faith of British authorities. So we are here to stand for him and to say, and we can't repeat it too often, because that's the fundamental pillar of America, right? basic fairness and due process. That's what we want for Scott Hapgood. Thank you all. One last, one last question, and then we've got to wrap it up. When is uh, Scott going back to Anguilla, and when will he appear in court again? Please step up to the podium of you for the attorney. Well, we are, we are expected this hearing is rescheduled for November 11th. We're expected uh, two days before the clear hearing. Uh, and he will be appearing in court, as he has been without fail on that date. Thank you, everyone. I know that you guys are looking for the order of speakers, so you get their names right. Adam can help you out uh, with that, and if you have any questions, you can grab us as well. But Adam can help you out with the order of speakers. Well, we have been watching a press conference held by Connecticut officials calling for the island of Aguila to grant safe passage for Scott Hapgood. Hapgood is charged with manslaughter and the death of Kenny Mitchell, a hotel worker in the Caribbean who Hapgood claims attacked him in front of his daughters. Officials call for Hapgood to receive a fair and transparent process ahead of his hearing in November. We also heard from Scott Hapgood himself. With tear-filled eyes, he asked for the charges to be dismissed and thank the Darien community for their support.